YouTube, Team Keep It Clean, what's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Uh, and it's a very, very special thing when you got people that really have your back. Uh, despite struggles, despite problems you may have, despite issues that you may be dealing with, when you have people that have your back, uh, that really, that, 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 that sets the tone for you moving forward to know that you got somebody that has your best interest in mind and they really have your support uh, and you have theirs as well. Um, and that's the case with Deshaun Elliott and Marlon Humphrey, uh, because Deshaun Elliott did say, hey, Marlon Humphrey, he's still the best cornerback in the game. Despite the struggles, despite how the season been going, he said he didn't say one of the No, he didn't say one of the best. He said Marlon Humphrey is the best corner in the game. He said he's still the best corner in the game. Uh, but before we get into that, um, it, it's like I said, it's nice to know that somebody has your back. And today is a very special day. Because today is November 3rd, so it is actually my wife and I's ninth wedding anniversary. So I can relate to somebody having your back through everything, through the ups, through the downs, through everything in between. So shout out to my wife, shout out to Carter, shout out to my family, shout out to friends, shout out to y'all, shout out to everybody. But anyway, so this presser, it started off with uh, John Harbaugh. Now, I, I didn't see much of Harbaugh's part. I came in late. Um... So I, I just saw him pretty much leaving and said a couple of things and whatnot, but I, I pretty much saw him leaving and started with Deshaun Elliott. Uh, and the way Deshaun Elliott started, uh, he was asked about if it was a good thing that they want to buy or, or would they rather have just got been able to get right back to it with working on that defense. Since the defense was a big yikes against the Bengals. And he said it was good to be on the bye week uh, after their performance. Uh, and he said that their expectations, they're, they're higher. They're much higher than what you saw <laughs> the other day a couple weeks ago well it seems like that was so long ago and so much has changed like we we were once at first in the AFC North and then we got demolished by the Bengals so that dropped us to second then the Bengals got beaten by the Jets so now we're right back in first and everything is right again but anyway he said uh they all have to step up he said the older guys like the veterans they have to step up and everybody else got to follow everybody and, and it's true it's true they, <laughs> they certainly do need to step up now, um, he said that they have to keep working on their technique and execution. Oh, and trust me, we, we, we believe that. We believe that 1,000% because that's where everything starts. Again, I, I keep repeating, it's fundamental stuff for me. It's the, it's the fundamentals that is, seems to have been the biggest issue uh, with the Ravens. So that's where it starts. That's not necessarily where it ends, but that's where it starts. So... And something that, in a, in a video that we put out earlier today, a question from subscriber video, um, we started talking about how I feel like they like the wink should simplify the defense. And the reason I say that is so, guys, instead of having to focus and think about, oh, okay, I got to do that, I got to do that, I got to do that, got to do this, got to do that, blah, 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 blah. instead of them having to focus on trying to do good and so many different things, let them try to focus on doing something great. So let them specialize in doing something great. And then... Start adding, giving them more responsibility as they master that one thing or maybe that one or two things. They master those things, then start adding more to their play. But again, I'm, I'm not a defensive coordinator and that's just my opinion. So it is what it is. Anyway, um, he said because uh, he was asked about Marlon Humphrey, like what's going on, Marlon Humphrey? Why has he been struggling? What's going on with him? And he said it isn't just Marlon Humphrey struggling. He said it's all of them. And he would be right. <laughs> he would definitely be right. Uh, but Marlon Humphrey, certainly, it's, it's been a big yikes for Marlon Humphrey. Um, anyway, uh, he said that everyone, everyone has bad days. And every, everybody can have a bad day. But, again, same thing I said, a bad day, just because you have a bad day does not make you a bad player. Because we've, like, we've heard some outlandish stuff from Ravens fans. And, and I know, like, after a loss, not even just a loss, but after a beatdown. And after, again, Marlon Humphrey's worst day as a professional. Um, I, I know Ravens fans, they tend to be a little crazy sometimes. Uh, and some of them can just, they could be, they could just say some wild stuff. Like some people were saying we should get rid of Marlon Humphrey. Some people were saying Marlon Humphrey is overpaid. Uh, some people were saying we should move Marlon Humphrey to like safety. I'm like what? Like what? what's, what? why? Why for what? Anyway, um, he said that, uh, and again, he said that Marlon Humphrey is the best corner in the, in the NFL. And all of them as brothers, they all just got to step it up. All of them. I'm like, hey, it's true. They do. They know what they need to do. We know what they need to do. Coaches know what they need to do. Front office know what they need to do. Uh, these other teams know what they need to do, but the other teams hope that they don't do it. Uh, but 
they know the task in front of them that's at hand. And, oh, you got the Vikings coming up. Ooh, boy. So we'll talk about that game when we talk about that game, though. And then, last but certainly not least, Mr. Lamar Jackson, he also spoke to the media. Uh, they asked him, did he do anything fun? Did you do anything fun during the bye week, Lamar? Uh, he said no. He said the week was boring. He said he slept a lot. But he said sleeping is fun. So that was that. Um, he said he's really excited for Nick Boyle to come back. And he said that Nick Boyle brings a lot to the table. Blocking, catching. and it, But he also talked about Nick Boyle's sense of humor. And, hey, you, you need that in your life. Everybody needs a sense of humor. Can't you just walk around like just all day just all be serious all the time. Be all day. Like, that'd be so boring. That'd be so boring. Like anyway, he said, um, oh, when he was speaking, uh, he just sounded to me, he sounded very relaxed. He sounded very refreshed. He sounded like he was like, <sighs> that's what it sounded like to me. Like he was just like, he had a breath of fresh air. He got a chance to like take a step back from everything. Because if you hear, if you listen to him before, like, and listen to him compared to today, I don't know if some of y'all caught that, but he just, he just sounded like a different Lamar. Like he was like more at ease. Um, but he also talked about, he was asked about the Ravens' success uh, after the bye weeks. And he said that with all, all the success that they've had, he just said he don't pay no mind to that. He said they just want to play and they need to play hard every single game. Every single game. No matter if it's after the bye week, before the bye week, whenever. He said they're they, they trying to go 4-0 for this next little stretch. And, hey, if y'all do that, I'm right there with y'all. Hey, we wouldn't complain at all. Um, he, asked, he was asked how good the offense can be. Uh, he said he really doesn't know the limit. Said he doesn't know, uh, and he said they just have to take it a game at a time. And that has been Lamar Jackson this year, all year. If you listen to the pressers, every single presser, they ask some similar questions, and he answers the same way. One game at a time. We ain't worried about stuff in the long run. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, but one game at a time. And that's, that's all that he be caring about. That's all he speaks about. Of course, they want to win a Super Bowl. Of course, they, they, they got bigger goals and whatnot. But next, one game at a time, next game up, they only focusing on that. It seemed like with the Bengals game, he might not have been too focused. But <laughs> so anyway, um, he, uh, he, they, he was asked why they haven't been as effective on third down. Because third downs have been a struggle. They've been a big yikes for the Ravens this year. And he said that um, he didn't even realize it was that bad. But he said that uh, he was glad that they had the bye week. Uh, and said they got to try to stay on the field uh, to help the defense out. Because obviously the, the longer the offense stays on the field, uh, the better rested, the more rested the defense is. Um, and, and, and it's important, too. That's why it's, it's important to, of course, we, we love the big plays. We love the big strike plays, the deep balls and whatnot. We, we, we love that. And that's a part of Ravens' game. Um, but sustaining drives is important. When you got a, those drives where you really got to grind it out, because because every every drive ain't gonna be oh a deep shot to Hollywood for sixty yards, a play to Bateman for twenty yards, or Sammy Watkins get back a play to him for fourteen yards. Every play, every drive ain't gonna be like that. So you're gonna have some drives where you got to grind it out a little more than others, and that's fine. That's part of the game of football. Uh, but he talked about with, with him with the offense having to stay on the field again. It helps the defense out that much more. You got a lot of veterans on the defense. Uh, you got, and, and even if you don't got veterans, you got guys that's tired. They get tired. The offense keep going three and out. Defense get tired. So it's important that the offense sustain drives and keep sustainable. Remember that? Remember? <laughs> oh, man. Is this offense sustainable? Oh, man, we ain't heard that word in a little minute. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, Pops Lamar. Uh, he was asked about his daughter. Uh, and he, I think, what what, uh, what do they call her on uh I forgot what 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 he what he called her on his uh, on his IG post that that got everybody talking about her recently when she was dressed up as uh, the Flintstone uh, Pebbles Pebbles I think um, and he just he sounded really proud of her and I was like okay that's what I'm talking about and I I mean this week when that picture came out shout out to Mora from Twitter uh, but when that picture came out I like a lot of people like they they didn't know that he had a daughter and I thought like this was like old news. I thought this was old news to, like, not everybody, but a, a lot of people, especially Ravens fans. But there were a lot of Ravens fans that just didn't know. I remember uh, Marlon Humphrey on a uh, on his post-game live streams on Instagram, his Instagram live streams. He talked about it, like, over a year ago. He said, oh, they, they, were, they were like, oh, where's Lamar? He was like, where's Lamar? Where's Lamar? And he was like, oh, he, he's, he's going to have a baby. He's going to have a baby. And he was like, oh, did it, was I supposed to say that? He said something like that. And then Lamar, Lamar has been posting this girl for a long time. 
So may, maybe it's just that people, maybe some people don't have social media and whatnot. If they don't have social media, then I could completely understand. So that, that will make it make more sense. If they don't have social media and they don't follow Lamar like on Instagram or something like that, or maybe Snapchat or whatnot, then I, okay, I can understand. So now that I said all that out loud, it makes more sense. But I, I just I just thought it was old news that he had a dog. Well, it technically is old news, but to a lot of people that didn't have that, that access to him or whatever, um, it would be new news to them. So shout out to Lamar for being a daddy. And he said that his daughter was actually there now. Um, and he he, said, he looked like he was ready to just go be with her. And as a father, like, especially at that, that age, like, man, it seemed like so long ago. Carter's six now. Um, but that it it that whole cheesy saying, oh, man, hey, cherish your moments because it goes by fast. It's true. And I'm sure all of y'all out there with kids, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, my son, like I said, he's only six, and I know exactly what they're talking about. It goes by crazy fast. And I remember when he hit like about three, four, I was like, man, I wish he could stay this age forever, man. But he's getting older. It gets smarter. They get just even more fun. They they, they talk back a little bit more too now. They, so they test you. But it's, a, it's definitely a gift and a blessing. So appreciate y'all for being gifts and being blessings. Team Keep It Clean. I love y'all. Thank you. Um, and just like that, we out. I'll probably see y'all later today because there seems to be a lot going on in the NFL, a lot of drama. You got the whole Aaron Rodgers situation with they saying he was unvaccinated. Some reports months ago said he was vaccinated, but now he's saying he's not. Then uh, So he's out for the game against the Chiefs. Jordan Love, go do your thing against Patrick Mahomes and them. Anyway, uh, and then you got Michael Thomas. He was on the PUP list, but now he said he's going to be out for the year. So it's like, oh, man, now say Saquon Barkley. Depending on how his tests go, he might miss the game coming up on Sunday for the Giants, even though, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but still. Um, so it, it's, it's a lot going on in the NFC right now. Um, and, and AFC, of course, the whole Henry Ruggs thing that is just just a mess, Sh straight mess. Um And it's like I said, like I said in the video from this morning, hopefully we can all take that. And learn from it because just just because it doesn't happen to you or you're not directly involved in the situation doesn't mean that you can't learn from it. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.